here's some tips along the way. Um, Rosie asked for nice pictures, tips, and a film, and I've hopefully delivered all of these things, and hopefully all the technology works. Um, so first of all, a film. This is a, a film that was made for the Heritage Angel Awards, and um, I just press and click, and hopefully you'll hear this. It's a bit low. A bit low. In January of this year, they led and orchestrated a high profile event in the Scottish Parliament, commemorating 250 years of James Watt's intense steam engine developed at the Every year, they organised things locally, promoting the anti wall World Heritage Site. When the group started, none of the volunteers worked in heritage. They have since learned about guiding, campaigning, charity work. This one. Thanks very much to the Scottish Civic Trust for allowing us to show that. Okay. Go back. So this is Camille House, and this is uh, the house we work with, uh, Historic Environment Scotland, uh, <coughs> up. It's A-listed, um, uh, dates back to probably late 1400s, early 1500s. And in recent years, we've opened up more of the house to show to the public. Um, but as we said in the film, originally it was closed, and also there was a threat to the museum, which is nearby. Um, this is what it's like inside. I said in the film it has great wall paintings and it showed a really <laughs> not particularly inspiring wall painting, but this is what it's like in the Arbour Room. Um, and the house um, was partly built by James Hamilton, second Earl of Arran, and he was Regent of Scotland when Mary Queen of Scots was a child queen. And of course, the Hamilton family who owned this house, one of the most noble families in Scotland. So um, they liked their art and they liked to have some nice, nice um, things. Um, and this was all covered over and forgotten about, and the house was being, part, it was being demolished, and then they found these paintings, and it stopped uh, the house from being demolished, and it was saved from the nation and put into state care. Still owned by local authorities, so interesting you talk about Lauriston uh, Castle. Um, Canoe House is owned by the local council, but in the care of Historic Environment Scotland, and obviously we work with Historic Environment Scotland to actually open up. 
it has a wonderful estate, 200 acres of grounds, um, ponds and woodlands and things like that. It also has the Antonine Wall um, going through it, so um, Kinneal House is actually a part of the official World Heritage Site and the wall uh, runs through and there's the remains of a wee Roman road and part of a Roman fortlet um, in the estate. So it's a bit like kind of walking back in time. You leave the, um, the 17th century parts of the house and walk back and see lots of other things. This is the museum, um, which is the stable block of the house. And that was the building that was threatened with closure in 2006. Um, and uh, as I say, the Friends were really formed because there was a meeting um, uh, about trying to save the museum and concerned about the museum closing. Inside, lots of things, interactive stuff, and we helped with an HLF project with um, the local community trust to run the museum um, to get um, uh, things like pottery stuff and various other things. And Maria worked on getting old pictures, and there's a photo frame that runs uh, pictures of stuff and talks about the colliery history and things like that at Keneal. And this is James Watt's cottage. Watt worked on developing the steam engine at Keneal. Um, so we have a real rich layer of history in the site, and I think that was partly why we were a bit concerned at the plan to close a museum in such a site that is incredibly rich in, in history. Um, and the house had actually been opened to the public until about the 1980s, but numbers had dwindled. And, and so it was closed, really open once a year. So you had a site that was a bit in decline until 10 years ago. And this is part of our medieval church. Um, not much of it left, but just the ruins of the church, but still used on Easter Sunday when people come and congregate there. So lots of lots of layers of history and things to see. And this is the nature reserve. We showed it just the first slide as well. An old colliery site um, uh, at, uh, right beside Camille Estate. So the first tip I wanted to pass on is if at you, first you don't succeed, try, try again. And um, basically you saw the film about the Heritage Angel Awards. Um, we were shortlisted in 2016 for sharing and celebrating and we won that category. But the story is that in 2015 we had entered the awards and didn't even get shortlisted. And I remember saying to Maria at the time, um, Historic Environment Scotland said, you're a really active group, you should enter. Um, this would be great for you. And I said, well, we've got a night out in Edinburgh. Um, but uh, I said, if we get shortlisted, you get a few drinks then, but that'll be great. Um, and so we didn't even get through to being shortlisted. I said, they're looking for someone else, a different type of group. Um, and I wasn't going, we weren't going to enter um, in 2016. And it was one of our trustees said, Adrian, send this stuff across. I'll relook at it and um, rework it and add some new things in. And we entered again and we won. So, and it was a huge, huge surprise when we went to the award ceremony. And I remember watching the other people who were shortlisted that year. And I said to Maria, I said, well, I said, we've had a nice night out. And it's, but they're really good. Um, so we were completely gobsmacked. And in fact, when the Friends was set up, um, we, um, you know, we did try and try again because there was a concern that, in fact, the museum was just going to close. We had a public meeting in the community and there was talk about the museum closing and 50 people turned up and were very unhappy. And I remember somebody from the council, I think, said to me at the time, oh, well, it's only 50 people and I thought we need to redouble our efforts. Um, and so we started a petition. We got mentioned in the museum's journal. The BBC did stuff, Observer. And so it grew, and we approached Historic Scotland and said, you know that house um, beside the museum, can we open it up? Um, and all of that effort led to us winning the award. But as I say, if you do enter awards and have a try, try again, because if you don't succeed the first time, you can um, be very... very <laughs> there's a cheer, Maria. It is an Oscar. It is an Oscar. Um, and... Uh, um, we have an Oscar, and in fact, the day that Oscar arrived at my house, I, I remember the lady from uh, DHL arrived, um, and I said, oh, it's my Oscar from Amazon. <laughs> um, and uh, so, but one of the things that we've tried to do is to bring people into the house. We only open the house eight times a year. And so we thought, well, let's form partnerships to kind of create a bit of a buzz about the things that we do. So the first open day of the season ties in with the Silent Film Festival in Bowness. So um, the Hippodrome is Scotland's oldest purpose-built cinema, partly restored with the help of HES, 
and other partners and uh, they have this uh, Scotland's only silent um, film festival so they asked us to open Keneal House up and the Historic Environment in Scotland said yes let's do it and I said let's make it a bit of fun and so we get some props and things and we ask people to pose with Oscars and all that kind of stuff so people get very into it I remember these ladies got a stool and they suddenly got really carried away you give people an Oscar and they kind of, I think we're ready to do acceptance speeches and things like that um, but great fun and we put these pictures on social media and so it makes a bit of an event about people's day so it's not them just having a tour of the house we make a bit of a fuss of them and it, you know, they, they have a lovely time and they can go be saying that was great fun and, um, and there's Maria again Maria's game for <laughs> uh, but great for publicity so uh, very good um, we also get involved in other things so this is Museum Gallery of Scotland's Festival of Museums um, and although the museum is run by Falkirk Community Trust, we often do a lot of the stuff on the ground um, for festival museums. And there was a mention of night at the museums, and so um, we decided that we would make it not just a festival museums event, but also a museums at night event. Um, so we opened the museum at night with the trust. Um, we have a bat walk in the grounds, and we found very conveniently the bats roost in Kirill House, so that's great. So they come out to play, um, and we get um, little um, bat detectors, and you can hear the bats, and children absolutely love it. So walking around the estate in May, um, just as it's getting dark, and hearing about the history and all that, because they're a bit spooky, it's absolutely great fun. Um, we also work with these ladies, and um, they're called the Gargoyles of Gargunuk. They sing Renaissance music, so they come to the house usually in, in August time and uh, sing in the house, and very, very popular, bring the house to life. So although we don't, uh, most of our guides aren't in costume, um, we bring people that are in costume. Historic Scotland also um, pay for a costumed uh, guide, um, usually around April time, and we have a different theme each year, and so they present, but we also do some, some present, presenting as well. And these are the lovely ladies from Fourth Environment Link um, who helped uh, re-establish the orchard at Keneal. So just in front of Keneal House um, was an orchard um, and the fruit trees had been taken away and it was said that, that Keneal was famous for its fruit trees and Maria was at an event and uh, heard that uh, um, there was some money going to re-establish an orchard and apparently the National Trust for Scotland, I've told, didn't want it for one of their sites and Maria said, we'll have it for Keneal. And so the orchard was reborn. And just recently, in fact, in this month's Historic Envo uh, Environment Scotland magazine, if you get it, um, there's a story about the orchard wall, how it's falling to bits, and they used that as a, as a project and have rebuilt the wall. Um, so, but the orchard's taking shape, we've got fruit trees planted, so that's great. Um, we also have the John Muir Way running through the estate, so lots of visitors coming for different reasons on a, a, a long distance trail. Through um, there, and in the last two years, we decided to connect two his sites. So we do a walk on John Muir's um, at the anniversary in, in April, and we walk from Keneal House to Blackness Castle, and then back. It's twelve miles. So some people that just like walking find that pretty good, and I usually lead that and talk about some of the history along the way. Um, these are some of the walking groups. You, met, you mentioned Rosie Pass for All, so really active Pass for All um, groups, um, walking groups in Bowness. Originally, they used to walk around housing estates in Bowness, and we suggested let's walk around Keneal Estate because it's much nicer. Um, so they started doing walks so three times a week, health walks, go around the estate, and it's another way to explore and enjoy the estate. Um, and we're not involved um, directly in it, but it's it's great to see that and uh, they meet at the museum, so it gets a wee bit of attention to the estate. And also I work with Historic Environment Scotland, our biggest partner, and um, this is the guidebook for Keneal House, so it was produced by Hayes, but actually has pictures that we've used in it, and so the interpretation team worked with us, and we sell that at the, at the house open days, and they make a bit of money, um, but the house uh, admission is free of charge, and you know, the volunteers are just inside, giving up their time freely. Um, so we mentioned partnerships, getting involved with other people's um, uh, festivals and events, but also you can maybe start your own festival. And we came up with this idea of creating a Roman festival um, called Big Roman Week. Um, so uh, the house and the estate are on the Einstein Wall, and we, um, one of our, in fact, one of our previous chairs. Um, found out that Antoninus Pius, uh, his birthday is in September, and he said that'd be a great time to have a Roman festival. 
and then he left about a year later and so we've inherited this this thing which has grown year after year. Initially it was focused on events in Bowness, but now we have events right across the Antony World World Heritage Site um, across the Falkirk Council area but we'd like other areas to get involved so if there's people from Glasgow and North Lanarkshire that want to get involved in Roman Week please let us know. As you saw in the film we get the Antonine Guard to come along and dress up and, uh, and great interpretation we have um, war games things that people can play with little toy soldiers, um, we've got um, archery stuff, there's some great activities that we organise in the estate um, and for a small voluntary group to put on an event like that so it's a big undertaking and children absolutely love it and they love dressing up um, and uh, I think Maria bought these clothes on Amazon, so they're not particularly that politically, uh, that uh, historically accurate, but great fun. And you know, we can give them out to kids, and they can just run around for the day, and they get them get them back at the end. Uh, this year, we actually bought an adult's Roman helmet for dads to try, because we realised that actually children love dressing up, but so do adults as well. So, um, so great, great fun. Um, our local library service also gets involved and does events um, to promote Roman Week and do talks and events and activities. Um, and it does wear us out, I have to say, <laughs> um, uh, being involved in Roman Week. But lots of talks and interactive things, so it hopefully tries to speak to different people. So if people just want to go for a walk, they might go on one of our walks around a Roman site, but they'll get a great walk and they'll also um, find out a bit about history. Next thing, I suppose, expanding horizons. We originally started up to save a museum, which we did, um, and we wanted to open up Keneal House, and we worked with the Historic Scotland to do that. Um, but then there was an approach to us to say, did we want to get involved in uh, the site next to Keneal Estate, um, which is Keneal, um, now Keneal Nature Reserve. I'm watching for time. Um, and this is a site, it's an old colliery site in Bowness. Um, and uh, it's been restored and so we decided that we'd, we'd actually bring that, that to life and we work with um, the council to um, cut down trees and clear areas so it's people that are into natural heritage and we found new volunteers as a result of that so it wasn't just people that were inter interested in built heritage and open days and it's a really nice site to, to visit um, and we've also put um, uh, tables and things into the into the into the site to make it a bit more accessible, but much more wild than the formal Keneal estate. We thought it was really important to think about a customer, and so this was a thing that we started um, to sell cups of tea and tunnocks, caramel, caramel tea, um, sorry, tunnocks tea cakes and other things in Keneal Museum. Um, they had taken away the coffee machine from the museum, and people said they wanted a cup of tea and they wanted cake and they wanted cola. So um, we have a volunteer that now does that, and some people don't want to do guiding uh, around a historic building, but they're happy to do car parking duty, or they're happy to sell a cup of tea, and they get to engage and chat to people, and give out leaflets and that type of thing. So that's another way that people can get involved. We also take pictures of people who come to our, the site, and uh, you know, we post them up on Facebook, so they love seeing that, and then they tell everybody they had a great day at Keneal House. And we also ask for feedback um, through TripAdvisor and through other means, um, and we share that with Historic Environment Scotland, and uh, it's, so far it's very, very positive. Tip number six, go on a learning journey. Um, we got some money to go on a trip to um, Hadrian's Wall, obviously, the Antonine Wall Roman site um, is part of the same old heritage site as Hadrian's Wall. So we went um, down to Hadrian's Wall country, this is Tully House Museum in Carlisle, which actually has about the bridge nest slab from Bowness, a replica. Um, and we trudged up bits of Hadrian's Wall, talked to people from English Heritage, met the volunteers, and what we thought was good is we could nick ideas. Now I would always say to people, if you go to other heritage sites or another museum, you'll say, we could steal that, we could use that. And so it's really, really useful to do that, and we had great support from Hadrian's Wall Trust to do that and uh, take a trip away. Involving young people, obvious one. Uh, Maria used to work in um, uh, with nursery teaching, and uh, so we get kids to come to Keneal at Halloween. We ask them to dress up and we give a prize for the best dressed child. It costs us a tenner and a book token, and we get great children that come and they're really having great fun. And also, some of our volunteers also dress up. This is Anna outside Keneal. Um, I mentioned the bat walk again, great fun, 
Uh, we've also taken kids um, from the local school on um, Keneal um, Steam Railway, which runs uh, through the edge of the through the nature reserve and through the edge of the estate. And um, Maria had found out that many of the children locally hadn't been on the steam train, so we took them to the museum at um, the steam railway, and then as a treat, gave them a surprise and said, "We're taking you on the train," and they had a great day out and really enjoyed it. And then we finished off by getting some funding to take them to the local pub. They were all very excited about that. They didn't have any alcohol. Um, but uh, they got burgers and ice cream and uh, had a great time with the school. Um, tip number eight, give stuff away. Always good. People always love a goodie bag. So for festival museums, we get these goodie bags. I think one year we got I Love Keneal House and Museum. They were very popular in Museum Gallery of Scotland, I remember. Um, so we stuff all these goodie bags. We get free crisps from Tesco's and Haribo's and all kinds of things, and even rubber ducks um, given to us. Put them in, and we also get stuff from Spetis, Scottish Fine Soaps, that we put in the adult bags as well, and people love that. So that's really good. Tip number nine, involve food and drink. And there was somebody said at this conference about having events where you have tea and cake, and volunteers really like tea and cake. And I have to say, events where you can get food involved is really popular. Um, these is, this is some of the food and some of the eager, hungry people at our James Watt Supper. And they came up with the idea of saying, in January, when it's usually a burn supper, let's do a burn supper with a twist, but have it about James Watt, because it's the anniversary of his birthday. And so we do it, and we have steam pudding, uh, appropriately enough, uh, hot, toddy. hot toddies um, for James Watt, and we do um, some poems and readings all about James Watt, and it's the same kind of idea. And all the committee get involved in making the food, and people have a great, great day out. So it's really nice. So, um, but it brings people together, and it gets a sense of of celebration and a bit of fun. Um, we also have um, an Italian night um, during a Roman week, and again, that's held in a local pub, and we get some Italian food, and we have a guest speaker. Um, but I do think things that have food and drink do seem to work and bring people together. And lastly, I suppose, celebrate your volunteers and say thanks. These are leaflets that we did just to um, recruit new volunteers. But really, on, on open days, we take pictures of the volunteers, we share that on social media, we talk about the work that the volunteers do. Um, we have drop-in sessions during Volunteers Week um, that encourage people to come forward, and again, we offer them food. Um, that's always good, a cup of tea and a, and a scone is always good. Um, but it kind of brings people forward and thinks this could be good fun, um, because I think that's what it is all about. It's really about making things fun and exciting for people. Um, some people want to dress up at open days, which is always nice, and that's great. Um, and also we get involved in the local um, volunteer centre, um, and they do awards for people for long service, so we recognise people through that as well, which is really good. And this is Ian, one of our volunteers, and he said, I like exploring the history, so he does lots of research, he's one of the guides in the house. An amazing guy, because you go to his talks and he just talks and talks about all the different things that he's found out about the house. So very, very good. And this is the last slide I thought I'd show you. One of our volunteers died, so we decided to buy a bench which sits in the front of Keneal Museum because we want to remember and celebrate our volunteers. And so we put, put this bench in front of the museum so whenever somebody visits the museum, they can some, uh, come in and think of David. So that's it. Um, and one last plug, just an expert's day. This is the last thing we're, we're just about to do, and it's ending our season. Uh, 19th of November at the Hippodrome, which I mentioned, We've got these experts who have been looking at the history of Keneal House. They've been working on behalf of Historic Environment Scotland, but they wanted to report back, and so we're hosting this event with HES um, to tell people about the history of the house. So if you want to come, you can book online. It's free of charge, and you'll get to see the wonderful historic building and also hear about the wonderful Keneal House. And a few words. <laughs> that, was, that was a very quick question.